born in Korea, went to America when I was like two, three years old. Grew up in America, California, Las Vegas, and then my grandma passed away. I went to Korea. I got stuck in Korea. First day I landed, they took away my passport. Then they gave me a chance to, you know, appeal my case and everything. And in the final sentencing, they were like, nope. So it took me five years to go through all my trial process. I mean, I can leave the country, but then there'd be a 30-year Interpol warrant for military conscription law, they call it. And so they, they, they gave me a choice because I came right at the, the age gap line of like 31 and it's till 36. So I was going to fight the case for five years from 31 to 36. And then when I'm 36, I don't have to go to the army, right? The judge right then was like, yeah, we already know what you're doing. You're going to go to the army or you're going to go to jail. <laughs> Just wake up, do push-ups, run, exercise, clean my gun, and then go guard the border. The north, the, at the, it's called the 30th parallel. So my thing was like I had a, I had like my own, how you say, to keep my mentalness intact. I would work out, I would write, and I would will myself to whatever I need to do. Mostly those three things: willing yourself, working out, writing. It's what kept the peace and. I guess my sanity and my health, you know, because you work out every day for five years or two years or one year or whatever, and it changes your body. It makes you, you know, it makes you the best you can be. It makes your body 100%. I don't regret anything because I'm here now. I came out of the army and I came out of this Korean bubble, this little South Korean, North Korean bubble, and you get to see the real world again. You know, like I didn't get to use a cell phone for two years. That was one of the laws in the Korean army. You can't have a cell phone. And then right when I got out of the army, guess what? They changed the law. You can have a cell phone now. So like I used to be only communicating with the world with one email on one day. Like on a Sunday, I get to like check my email and do a Skype call to my family and my little sister, or older sister, and my mom and dad, which they don't even know how to use. You know, Asian parents, they don't know how to use fucking Skype. They're like, what's Skype? <laughs> so like I had this little communication with the world and I came out and I was like, the world was fucked up even more than I went in. Like, you know, the world, I mean, the children, the kids, the, the new generation, they're not, they're not like the old generation. You know, they're not like our generation or your generation. They're different. They're like, they live on this, the cell phone. Colombia. So I came out of the army 2019, December, like November 28th. I remember I got out and then. I, I, I officially say December because that's, December was when I first filed for my passport. So it took two days to kind of like, it felt like I got out of prison because it's like I had no content. I was just like, what the hell's going on? Filed for my ID, filed for my passport, got that going. And then once I got all that going, I bought a ticket to Columbia because I, I had a first sergeant friend here who was uh, working in the personal training and supplement and, you know, fitness industry here. And that's what I do. And that's what I did in the past. That in real estate. He said, just come through. And I came through. And then, bam, the pandemic hit. So my day flying out to back to Korea was the day of the quarantine. No flights in, no flights out. Only humanitarian flights. So I basically got stuck here. But to me, I didn't get stuck here. I, I wanted to live here anyways. So I got all this like time to kind of fall in love with Colombia and live here and make a life for myself. Because it's really hard for foreigners to like make money, because the, the average pay here is like two hundred fifty, three hundred dollars a month. That's what all these guys make? The police make a little bit more than that, three fifty. But they don't make shit. They don't make. They don't make any money here. And so for you to like have something here and create a life, which you can, it's hard to do. But if you do it, then you want to stay because it's like think about it. Our money is you know even you know. Our dollar or our yen or our, you know, won or whatever, it goes so much further than in our own country. It was right in um, Parque Yedes in El Poblado in Colombia, Medellin. And she was with my friend who is the, was the manager. And she's like, hey, 
And right there, I fell in love. I was like, girl, I love you. Like, I'm going to fall in love with you. You're going to fall in love with me. And it was kind of like that. I just told her, I said, yeah, you know I'm going to fall in love with you. Because, you know, she's one of those girls you fall in love with. No, she was kind of scared because she has her own story. But <laughs> you'll meet her, I hope. You know, She might be coming here after she gets her eyelashes done or something. And then she was there like for three weeks, came back for me for three more weeks, and then she left, and I, I couldn't be without her, so I was like, hey, I'll come see you two days later after she left. I just kind of like showed up. It's a tough question. If I had a choice to change my life and redo it again, I would, I would do the same exact thing. Because it's the only way to exact and end up exactly where I'm at now. Right? Same for anyone who's in love or married. Right? You can't change your past to get to this present because you will change your past and your present will be different. 